The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform in collaboration with MinPostel, CRTV, UNESCO and UNICEF for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers. For secondary school students, learning has never been easier with distance learning. An initiative by the Ministry of Secondary Education under the stewardship of Professor Polina Lovalunga in collaboration with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, CRTV, and UNESCO. And UNICEF. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes, and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your question. Take it in your stride. Danova Lunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to phase six of our mission for mathematics advanced level. For our mission, we'll be looking at calculus. There will revise differentiation, integration, application of calculus. Differentiation from first principle. The y dx is the limit as x tends to zero of x, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Techniques of differentiation. So, if we have a function y, which is made up of two functions, u and v, that vary with x, to differentiate them, we have dy dx will be equal to du dx plus dv dx. For product, y equals to uv, where u and v are functions in x, dy dx will be v du dx plus u dv dx. Rational functions. If y is a rational function, say u and v, where u and v are functions in x, dy dx will be b du dx minus u dv dx divided by v squared. Composite functions. If y is a function in u, where u equally varies with x, dy dx will be dy du multiplied by du dx. Differentiation of logarithmic functions. If y is equal to the f of x, then dy dx will be the derivative of the function divided by the function itself. Exponential function. If y is a function e to the power f of x, then dy the x to be, we can let the numerator be u, we differentiate it, and later on we differentiate y with respect to u, then to obtain dy the x to be the derivative of the function with respect to x multiplied by e raised to the power f of x. Parametric functions. If y is a function with respect to t, 
and x is a function g with respect to t. To obtain dy dx, we have to first differentiate y with respect to the parameter t, g with, a, with, a, with respect to the parameter t before looking for our dy dx. And to obtain our dy dx, we will have dy dt, all that divided by dx dt. Alternatively, this can also be written as dy dx will be equal to dy dt multiplied by dt dx. This dt dx comes from dx dt, which we transform it as one on dx dt to obtain dt dx. And you see that here now, when it comes out here, we come to we come out with dy dx. Tangents and normals. A tangent is a point, a line that touches a curve at one and only one point. A tangent is a line that touches a curve at one and only one point. If a curve is given to us, say, y is equal to f of x passing through a point, then we should find the gradient of the tangent at a particular point. To get the tangent of that line, we will have it as y minus f of a equal to f prime of a into x minus a. Let's say, for instance, that you were given some function in terms of y or in terms of x, and that function passes through a point. Now, to get the equation of a tangent to that curve, we need to differentiate the function and then substitute the value of x in that function to get the gradient of that curve. Thereafter now, we use the equation of a line where we have an equation of a line given to us as y minus y minus y the gradient of the tangent into x minus x1. x1 and x1 are the points where that line is the tangent to the curve, a normal to the curve. The equation of a normal to a curve is y minus f of a minus one, negative one of f prime of a into x minus a. Negative one on f of f prime of a is, f prime of a is a gradient of the tangent. I will see here that the product of the gradient of the tangent and the number is equal to negative one. Which means that if the number to a curve is given to us, we can obtain if the value of the number to a curve is given to us, we can obtain the value of the tangent. And equally, if the value of the tangent is given to us, we can also obtain the value of the number to obtain the value of to, to obtain an equation of a curve. Rate of change. Rate of change. dy dt is equal to dy dx multiplied by dx dt. That is how we look for the rate of change. Integration. Fundamental laws of Integration. Integration are and differentiation are two processes where one is the reverse process of the other. That is why we have here that f of x is equal to dx, d of dx, the integral of f of x dx from a to f of x. 
Generally, if we have dy x equal to x to the n, then to do this, we have dy is equal to x to the n dx. If we integrate dy here, we'll have integral of dy, integral of x to the n dx, and here, integrating that we'll have y is equal to x to the power n plus 1 or n plus 1 plus the constant of integration. Meaning, therefore, that the integral of x to the n is x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus the constant of integration. Techniques of, integra techniques of integration. Power of linear functions. The integral of ax plus b to the power n dx is equal to 1 on a in bracket n plus 1. All that ax plus b to the power n plus 1 plus the constant of integration. Exponential functions. The integral of e to the f of x dx is equal to 1 on the derivative of f of x multiplied by e to the power f of x plus the constant of integration. Portion. The integral of the derivative of function divided by the function itself dx is equal to the, the limit of the absolute value of that function plus k. Powers of sine x and cos x. How do we de differentiate powers of sine x? Sine to the n x cos x dx. Here, we will have it that the integral of sine to the power n of x cos x is equal to cos x dx is equal to 1 on n plus 1 sine to the power n plus 1 x plus k and for cosine we we'll have it as negative 1 on n plus 1 cos to the power n plus x n plus 1 x plus k if we look at what we differentiate Cosine, we have negative sine. Then, now in integration, when we integrate sine, we have negative cosine. And when we integrate cosine, we have instead positive sine. Integration by parts. From the product rule, y equal to uv, where u and v are some functions. In x, dy dx is equal to v du plus u dv. And from there, we have it that u dv equal to dy dx minus v du. Leading us to the fact that when we integrate u dv, we have it as u v minus the integral of v du. Applications of calculus. Area between two curves. The area between two curves is given as A is equal to the absolute value of the integral from the lower limit to the upper limit of f of x minus g of x dx. Take note here that it is advisable to always sketch a curve to know which curve is above and the other below. That is, we are talking of a situation where we have say, a curve, two curves, like that. One on the curve, this is the curve, let's say f of x, 
and then g of x where from a to b and they are asking you to look for this area here so the area there will be the absolute value of, of the integral from a to b of the upper curve minus g of x the lower curve dx volume of revolution the volume of revolution d is equal to by integral from a to b y squared dx about the x axis about the x axis centroid the coordinate of the center of the centroid for the x coordinate will have it as the integral from a to b x y dx divided by the integral from a to b y dx and the y that's y bar we have it as half integral from a to b y squared dx divided by integral from a to b y squared dx the mean value of the function the mean value of the function is equal to one over upper limit minus lower limit integral from a to b of the function f of x dx first order separable differential equations if we have a differential equation like what you are seeing on your screen dy dx equal to f of x multiplied by g of x the first thing here is we need now to separate the variable so that we are integrating a function varying with it that is, we have to make sure that dy and g of y should be together, f of x and g of x should be together before we can now integrate. And in the course of doing that, we are going to have what we are seeing on your screen, integral, of, integral 1 of g of y dy is equal to integral 1 of f of x dx. The trapezium rule. The area under a curve, if we share out the curve into smaller strips of width, we'll have the area there to be equal to 1 divided by 2, all that into bracket, the ends, that's y1 plus, y and that is ends plus 2 multiplied by the terms in the middle of the curve. We have come to the end of revision of phase one. We'll be back for revision questions. The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform in collaboration with MinPostel, CRTV, UNESCO and UNICEF for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers. For secondary school students, learning has never been easier. With distance learning, an initiative by the Ministry of Secondary Education under the stewardship of Professor Polina Lovalunga in collaboration with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, CRTV, and UNESCO. And UNICEF. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, 
listen to the teacher, take down notes, and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your question. Take it in your stride. Danova Lunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Revision questions. Write down the corresponding letter to the correct answer for each question. The derivative of cos 1 minus x with respect to x is, we have that on the board there, as you see on your screen. Here, the essence of this question is to see if you understand the type of function that is found here. You have an inner function, which is 1 minus x, and an outer function, which is cos. And with that, you can now use it to solve your problem. Well, we'll have inner derivative multiplied by outer derivative multiplied by the inner function. That is that part with the result that you see on the bottom there. If we have it as what you see on the screen, say let's see, let now u equal to 1 minus x, they will imply our y equal to cos u. Now we differentiate u with respect to x and y with respect to u. The u, the x, equal to negative 1. The y, the u is equal to negative sign u. And now, how do we obtain the y, the x? The y, the x, is equal to the y, the u, multiplied by the u, the x. What is our the y, the u? We have negative sign u. And our the u, the x, we have negative y. A negative one and a negative piece of with a positive value, so we end up with sign u. Then what is our u? Our u is 1 minus x, which will then have it as sign of 1 minus x. And you see that the correct answer there is b. Question 2. The integral of 1 over x plus 4 to x is, we have all those options there. How can we arrive at solution? We can use substitution there to do, to come up with our result. Well, we say when we say let u equal to x plus four. Let u equal to x plus four. The u is equal to the x. The u equal to the x. And now, here, what are we having? We have integral of 1 over x plus 4. Now we have the integral of our du, our dx is du, du over u, which we have in our integral of 1 over u, du, and we have that the d of u plus k. Then what is our u? Our u is x plus 4. So we will have it as the d of the absolute value of x plus 4 plus k. As you see on the screen, the correct answer is c. Question three. 
Solve the differential equation. One plus x squared dy dx equal to one. The solution to the differential equation, one plus x squared dy dx equal to one is, here we have to separate variables. Here we have to separate variables. And which will have in there, then we have separating variables. Separating variables there. Separating the variables, we have one plus x squared divided the x equal to one. The first thing we have to have one plus x squared divided equal to the x. And when we are making the y the subject, we have to ask the y equal to one on one plus x squared. The x and now we integrate both sides and have integral of the y equal to integral of one on one plus x squared the x. And with this, the derivative, the integral will be y now will equal to tan inverse of x plus k and the correct answer there is b the parametric equation of a curve are 1 minus x equal to tan x and y equal to sec, sec one minus x equal to tan theta and y equal to sec theta. The Cartesian equation of the curve is now that we have the Cartesian equation, it means therefore that we need to now transform this to have the equation only in terms of x and y. Let's come back to trigonometric identities and see how we can solve our problem here. Express it in, in Cartesian form now only in terms of x and y. So, what do we have then? Remember that we said sine squared x plus cos squared x equal to y. From here, can I have something? Can I have something? Okay. Can I have tan and sec in my solution? If I have all of this, tan is sine of our cos. Is there a relationship between sine and cos? Now I've talked about we have theta. We have theta. So we try to express this by in terms of theta. So much so that we will now see how we come out with our solution. And you see there, you have it there that one plus tan squared theta is equal to set squared theta. What is one tan theta? The tan theta is one minus x. So we have it one plus one minus x all of squared. What is you are sec theta. The sec theta is y. y squared. If we expand this, we are going to have one plus one minus two x plus x squared equal to y squared. And now we say the Cartesian equation. So making this now the Cartesian equation y as x squared minus y squared 
minus 2x plus 2 equal to 0. And we have the Cartesian equation. I see that the correct answer there is C. Correct answer there is C. We look at how we arrive. Our answer. The relation between two variables, x and y, produces values as shown in the table below. X is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And Y is equal to 5, 3, 5, 6, and 3. By applying the trapezium rule, find the integral from 0 to 4 of Y, the X, that it approximates to 18. The value of M is Remember that in our, our trapezium rule is a is equal to h over 2 into sum of n plus 2 times the middle times the middle. And how do we get the h? It's easier to get the step length by going to the row of the values of x and find the difference between the values. And if you look at the difference there, the difference there is 1. 1 minus 0 is 1. 2 minus 1, 1. And it continues like that till we reach 4. So our h there is 1, which we're having as 8 plus 1 over 2 into the n what are the n values? The n values are, n values are, n values are 0, you have 3, which is the first value, and 4, the value there is 3, so we have it as 3 plus 3 plus 2, multiplied by the middle values now, we have 5, 6, and n, so we have 5 plus 6 plus n. We have told them this scale line approximates to 18, so we have the number 18, is equal to a half, into 6 plus 5 plus 6 is 11, plus that is 22, plus 2n. 6 plus 22 is 28, and we have it as 18 is plus a half into 28 plus 2n. We need to obtain the value of n. We can equally divide all through here by two, or we cross over the diagram, carry out subtraction to have a linear equation to solve to get the value of m. And in so doing, we'll see that the value of m will be 4. Value of m is 4. The next question. We are moving to the part two type of questions. Question 1a. Given that y is equal to lim of 1 plus x squared divided by 1 minus x squared. Show that dy dx is equal to 4x divided by 1 minus x squared. Looking at this problem, we have different, different ways of handling the problem. We can use the laws of logarithm, apply, differentiate, and come out with the result. 
We can still use the chain rule and we still can have with the result. So let's look at the method that I used in solving the problem. You can say y what we need of one plus x or one minus x squared. If I say let my u be equal to one plus x squared and one minus x squared. Let u equal to one plus x squared or one minus x squared. This implies that y is equal to be u du dx will be the bottom, which is y minus x squared minus the multiplied by the derivative of the top. 2x minus all of that, the top, and the patient, the bottom, the bottom 1 minus x squared, all that squared. I now simplify my limiter. One. So opening this will have two x minus three x cubed minus into bracket thirty two x minus two x cubed. All that on one minus x squared, all that squared. This will end up adding 2x minus 3x cubed plus 2x plus 2. This is 2x cubed, sorry. And now we have 2x cubed plus 2x cubed all that on 1 minus x squared, all that squared, the cube will cancel out and we are left with 4x on 1 minus x squared, all that squared. We have looked for the u, the x. Now let's look for the y, the u, the y, the u is equal to 1 on u. I need to look for dy dx. We need to look for dy dx. So how do we get dy dx? dy dx is equal to dy du multiplied by du dx. Dy dx is equal to dy du multiplied by du dx. So what am I going to have here? My dy du is one on u. And what is my u? My u is one plus x squared on one minus x squared. So if I take that one on all of this, you find out this now come up one minus x squared will come up and we are left with one. Minus x squared, y is one on that, so I'll that with one minus x squared, all that one plus x squared, multiply by du dx, what is my du dx? 4x, all that on one minus x squared, all that squared. One, this will take care of one of this. And if you look at this here, this ends up giving us 4x over 1 minus x to the power 4, which is what we are asked to show. As you can see on your screen,
We move on to the B part of the question. The B part of the question. Looking at the solution there on the screen. While we are looking at what is expected of us to do with the deep part of the question. The deep part of the question is talking about para the parametric equations. Parametric equations. And what are the equations there? We have x is equal to ct and y is equal to y is equal to ct and y is equal to c on t. And we are asked find the equation of the tandem. Or we should show that the equation of the tandem is x plus t squared y equal to 2 ct. If we look at the parametric equation there, x is varying with t, y is varying with t. And then we have it that x ct, y c on t, the x, the t. What do we have? Wow. The x, the t, this is the constant, and this is what the value. This derived term is on the right hand, we have one. The x, the t will give us c and the y, the t will give us negative c on t. Negative c on t squared. Because when you take this one, we have to see it to a negative one, we have negative c on t squared. Now, we need to obtain the gradient. That's dy, dx. dy, dx is equal to dy, dt, multiplied by dt, dx. Again, remember that this dt, dx is the same as 1 of dx, dt. So what do we have here? We have dx, dt, but we have dt, dx, so we need now to obtain it, which we will simply have that dy, dt is negative c of t squared multiplied by dt, dx is 1 over c. And now we'll end up having it as negative one of t squared. That is the gradient. The gradient of the tangent. Y is equal to negative one about t squared. Now we have to find the expression of the line passing through the point. Now we have the point D, C, T. And one and C on T. So for the gradient, for the equation of the what do we have? Y minus Y1 is equal to gradient of tangent into X minus X1. My Y1 is C on T, and the gradient of tangent is negative 1 on T squared. My X1 is CT. Which we will have to then now as y minus the y1 c on t equal to gradient of tangent negative 1 on t squared into x minus ct minus ct. And now we multiply all two by t squared, and we have to ask t squared y minus ct equal to negative x plus
And now we have to get the mass t squared y plus x is equal to 2cc. When this t meets the left hand side and meets the other t on the right hand side, we have 2cc. Which now we obtain the equation of the tangent as x plus t squared y is equal to. 2C T as we are asked to show. Question 2. Find the integral of the x dx. B evaluate from 0 to 4 of x plus 1 divided by the square root of 1 plus 2x dx. Using the substitution, u squared is equal to 1 plus 2x. We begin with 2a. We begin with 2a. Integral of the x, the x. Integral of the x the x we have it there now the integral look at here we are just seeing the x this is the same as saying integral of the x and one and one dx. And here, now we have a you know, We can now say, let the u equal to the x and the t equal to 1 dx. du dx equal to 1 on x and integral of dv we go to integral of 1 dx, so our d is equal to x. Now, we have the now as i is equal to u d minus integral of d du dx dx. What is my u? My u is in x. And my d is x minus integral d is x. My d u is x, 1 on x, dx, which will have that as x minus x minus integral. This and this will divide on the left one integral of dx, which will have that as x minus x minus x. Which can be expressed as x into the limit. x minus 1 will factor of x plus a function of integration. Where right. c is a constant of integration. That you see, we use k. And we move on to the next part of the question. The next part of the question then is talking about the integral from 0 to 4 of x plus 1, all that divided by the root of 1 plus 2x dx. How can we solve this? We say integral of x plus 1 of the square root of 1 plus 2x dx from 0 to 4 
You can say let u squared equal to 1 plus 2x. You differentiate this, we we'll have this as 2u du is equal to 2 dx, which means therefore that u du is equal to dx. Here I equally, we should we need to look for x because in the numerator we have x plus 1. So we have it then as u squared equal to 1 plus 2x. So u squared minus 1 on 2 is equal to our x. Okay, the next thing is we change the unit. So that when we go back to our integral, we start substituting and we find that we will simplify out and we can easily integrate. We now change the limit. We have x and u. When x is 0, x is 4. To obtain the values of u, we simply can substitute it here. When x is 0, 2 multiplied by 0, we have 0. And to get u, we take the square of both sides, we now have u equal to 1. x is 4. 2 multiplied by 4 is 8 plus 1, 9. And we have u squared equal to 9. So u equal the root of 9, which is us. 3. And we have there 3. So in the course now of integrating, using only u, we will now have this integral now. Here now, we have it then now as integral from 0 to 4 of x plus 1 all that form the square root of 1 plus 2x, the x will not be down. We now need to transform everything now from x and change it to u, which will have it then now as the integral from 0, from 1, sorry, from 1 to 3. What is my x? My x will be u squared minus 1 on 2. 2 squared minus 1 divided by 2 plus 1. All that divided by. We take the square root of u squared the u and we divide that. We have it as integral from 1 to 3 u squared u squared yeah. u squared minus 1 and my the x is u du sorry it is u du so we have u squared plus 1 all that the square of u squared is u multiplied by u the u. This and this is right out, and we are left with the integral from 1 to 3 of u squared plus 1 the u. Okay, the 2 here, this was on 2. u squared my of that on 2, all of that, this, all of it on 2, all of it on u, this and this will cancel out. And we have it there now as a half. We have this as a half. Integral from 1 to 3 of that. Which we will not have a half. Into the integral of u squared is u cubed on 3 plus u from 1 to 3. We now substitute upper limit minus lower limit, which will have a half. Into 27 on 3. 
plus 3 minus 1 third plus 1 and we simplify all of that will end up having 16 on 3 we have 16 on 3 we have come to the end of revision for pure mathematics. <laughs>